Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is James and welcome back to episode two of the Salon QP series where we're going to talk about our experience and what we liked and disliked about the event. Um, so in this episode, we're going to go through floor or level one and then ground floor, the last two floors in this episode. If you didn't watch the last episode, go watch it. We went into a lot of detail about brands we saw, what we liked and disliked and everything like that. So hopefully you enjoyed it, but let's just jump straight into this one. All right, and so the first brand we saw was Armin Storm. Unfortunately, we don't really remember much about them. Um, they look nice from the pictures we're looking at now. We'll put a few pictures up on screen. Um, but other than that, I don't. We didn't get an opportunity to actually speak to anybody. They were busy with other people. It, yeah, it, I mean these these, floors... these ones. I don't remember this as being rude. I think it was just they were being busy. They were yeah. busy with sort of other stuff. So, um, whereas we remember the ones where they were a bit rude. Uh, this one definitely wasn't one. So we we just we just don't really. I think much. I think as we went further down, obviously it got busier with yeah. people. Um, we started at the top. until the last floor. The last that floor room. was pretty dead. Yeah. Um, this yeah. floor was quite busy with everyone, so we didn't yeah. really get much chance with a lot of different people, yeah. um, unfortunately. But the next one we went and saw was Christopher Ward. I was glad to see these because I wanted to to see what they're offering. I've never experienced Christopher Ward, and I can now say I have. And we spoke to two people, uh, which were sales reps. Yeah, I, think. I, I would say. I would so. say sales reps. I didn't really because I was asking certain questions about yeah. the watches in particular that they didn't really know about at all. So I think there were sales reps, but they were all right guys that yeah. showed us the watches and everything. Nothing wrong with them at all. Um, I handled a few of the watches. Now, let's talk about it from a retail standpoint. Their prices retail are they're pretty similar to Aorus. Right? Yeah. They're pretty yeah. similar to Aorus. The quality, in my opinion, is not on level with Aorus. I think for the same price, if you're paying retail, go with Aorus or even Hamilton. Um, their quality wasn't there. Now, we actually asked them about, the, well, you asked them about the logo, didn't you? Yeah. About the logo change, if yeah. it's impacted the business. Now, what they said, this is quote, um, that their sales are up and the, the change in logo has actually positively affected sales. Yeah. Um, that's what they said. I don't know how true that is. Um, I'm not going to say it's not true because I, I have no clue. It could very well be true. But I, I after seeing the logo, I don't, I don't like it. It looks horrible on the watch. It really does. And I'm going to stick by what I said in Anthony's live stream where I said, I think it's going to ruin the brand. I'm sticking by that. Yeah, I mean, personally, um, I, I think um, the sim simplicity of the uh, previous uh, logo um, said a lot more for the brand yeah. than uh, putting out the full name on, on, on the dial. I think it just made it look uh, too busy um, on the dial. It's the font. Um, it's not the fact that they've yeah. put the full name, in my opinion, because a lot of brands do that. Rolex, yeah. Audemars Piguet, mm -hmm. um, many brands do that sort of yeah. stuff. But it's the fact, the font they use, it's just, it's just too plain, too simple, too, too Google, uh, not too Google, too um, Microsoft Word. That's what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Too paint. Yeah. You know, that yeah. paint program, you know, it's yeah. just very simple. Um, their designs are so clean and some of them I really, really like the design of. Yeah. Really nice. We, we've got a picture of uh, one of the blue ones that yeah. we saw with the five day, uh, oh, five uh, day power reserve. Yeah, yeah. I'll put that up on screen. Yeah. Beautiful watch, but that, yeah. that logo for me ruined it. I'm not going to lie. It really did ruin it. It put me off buying it. And now second hand, you can pick them up at a steal. And I think for the second hand prices, they're pretty good. Um, yeah, because they, they plummet, yeah. they plummet from retail yeah. quite heavily from what I've heard and seen. Um, so if you can pick one up second hand, you're looking for a clean design watch and the logo doesn't bother you. I'd say go for them. They felt pretty decent for what you get. Um, but quality wise, I don't think they're anywhere near the level of Aorus personally. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've experienced my Aorus and yeah. you felt their, their bracelet watch, the watch that was on a bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it did it, feel a bit cheap. Yeah. It, it, the weight wasn't there. Um, definitely compared to the Aorus. I mean, whether weight and quality go you know, yeah, hand of course, in hand, of course. We, who knows? But at the end of the day, right now I'm wearing the Vostok, and yeah. uh, this is heavy. Yeah. Personally, it's not. But we're well, we're gonna skip that bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, everyone will cry. Oh, yeah. The next but, one is Fellows. They've got an auction coming up on the 22nd. Um, they they tweeted me saying it. Make sure yeah. we see you there at the 22nd. Yeah. So the 22nd of November. Hopefully, this video will be out before then. So if you want to go, it was in Birmingham. I can't remember where exactly. So just search Fellows Auction. Um, and they will give you it will give you all the information on there. Now these were the most interesting and my favorite thing um, of the whole day. The two guys that were there were the most yeah. friendly and inviting people I think in the whole place. Um, they were just so so nice. And you, the funny thing was we went over there and I saw I saw the um, the the Rolexes they had in there. They had a vintage Seiko as well, the first ever diving watch by Seiko. Um, 
they had some amazing offers. Two Paul Newmans in the same place. So already I was drawn. I was talking to one of the guys about it. And you were talking to the other guy about your Seiko. Yeah. And pretty much you were having a conversation with that guy about the Seikos. And I was having a conversation with the other guy about the Rolexes. And I got to try on. Pictures will be on screen. Yeah. Both Paul Newmans at the same time. 100 Major, grand on my wrist. Major at least. century, I think. There's a picture of me. I'll probably put that one up as well. You took a picture of me wearing it. Yeah. Didn't you? yeah. And you can see my fate. It's just Great cheesy as anything. Yeah. Um, but that was a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, I hear people say they got to try on a Paul Newman and they were so excited. Mm. And I don't think many people say they even got to try on two, especially yeah. a once. So That's I'm very, right. very privileged. Yeah. And that was probably the best experience there I had. They had an old uh, Explorer 2 as well. They had some beautiful watches. Yeah. And uh, we were going through this when we were sitting having a coffee afterwards and just looking through some of the offerings and there's some beautiful watches um, up for auction. So make sure you go and what, what was your experience on yeah, them? Yeah, I mean, um, so unfortunately I can't remember his name. I, I apologise. Uh, but um, yeah, we were just talking about uh, Seiko and how understated uh, the brand is. Uh, he's an avid collector from, uh, like myself, like loving the vintage Seikos um and um yeah he he, he uh, has got so uh, he's he's got a whole number of uh, pieces that he's collected over time and it was so interesting just to talk to someone who's got the same enthusiasm as uh, as ourselves with regarding Seiko and uh, even though you know you've got the Daytonas that he's selling uh, on behalf of people with the uh, the auction house um you know to be an avid collector of um, you know, of, of, of certain brands, uh, I think it's, it's a special moment when you see some a like a like a person like that. Yeah, of course, and it was great to see them bring all them watches. You know, two Paul Newmans, uh, the brand new Daytona with the ceramic dial, which I got to try on as well. Explorer two, and then in the corner was a Seiko, yeah. and he had a world timer in his pocket as well, which he was putting yeah. uh, going to take downstairs for the world timer display thing that they had. I just thought it was really cool to see stuff like that and I, I respect people like that massively who can appreciate the extremely over the top watches in terms of what people pay for them um, and then also the, the completely other end of the spectrum you know it's, it's great to meet people that have that same appreciation and um, I want to say something the, the experience of trying on both Paul Newman's was amazing now that was mainly because the watches the dial itself beautiful I thought it was really really nice yeah um, I understand that not many people like them fair enough um, but, and I've heard this from so many people, but it was just strange to finally experience it. The bracelet was the worst piece of crap ever. Literally, the, the Seiko 5 bracelets from the same era are better. And I've experienced them, and so have you. Yeah. They were yeah. they were better. The it, Seiko it, bracelets were better than the it, Rolex it, at that time. It certainly did surprise me. I, I didn't expect I felt quality. I was snap it. Uh, the quality was yeah. I mean, they were <laughs> very fragile. You can, you can understand why they stretch. Yeah. Um, in the way that uh, Rolex uh, bands do, it's just, yeah, I, I was, um, yeah, I mean, the, the dial itself uh, was just beautiful. Yeah. I love, um, you know, uh, uh, chronographs and and the Paul Newman is, is just the An uh, iconic the, piece, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is. It's uh, the, the, the top of the mountain for it. Yeah, and talking about the new Daytona that I tried on the 2016 model with the ceramic dial. Really nice, I really liked it, very comfortable, surprisingly light as well. I think it was literally like half the weight of my Aorus, which was just yeah. incredible. I really expected it to be heavy. I don't know why, I just think of Rolex and I, I think of weight. You know, the Submariner I've heard is quite heavy, mm -hmm. so I was just like, it must be a heavy watch. Really light, and the bracelet was really nice. I don't think you got to see it, but it's got the fold over clasp and the, it's got that new style uh, bracelet. You know the normal ones you pop them open. Right. This one it like pulls a lever forward and it like come, it's really oh, odd. Right, you'll have okay. to you have to watch a video yeah. and it'll show you. But yeah. it was really really nice to experience that and it was very cool bracelet uh, buckle design. So good job Rolex on that and it looked beautiful. I know that everyone says the Daytonas are probably the worst that Rolex do in terms of quality, mm. but in terms of looks, oh my god, it was beautiful. Yeah. It really was. I'd I'd happily own one. Absolutely. <laughs> or two. Or, or three. Right. Yeah. And so we're gonna move on to Young Hands now or. Um, yeah, Junghans. Let's just move yeah. on to Junghans. So, uh, obviously, a German brand, uh, Junghans. Um, I've, I've got a history going back uh, with the, uh, the aviation uh, watches, and then uh, a whole series in the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s of very clean dials, 
Um, uh, there's um, in their range there's the Bauhaus, uh, famously um, the uh, the Milbrand. Um, there's all sorts of uh, uh, variations of a theme. Uh, very very clean, um, Euterian um, styles. I, I just love uh, Young Hands. Uh, the whole history behind them. Um, and I think um, the pricing is quite reasonable for what they offer as well. For, for what they are, I think, yeah. And I think second hand you can probably get them in a steal as well. I, the, the thing that I really liked was the chronographs. I thought they were beautiful, the chronographs they had to offer there, which is really, really nice, weren't they? They um, were. The design of them and everything was just immense. And we're looking through the book now as we're talking to you, and these ones weren't here, but they've just got so many great offerings. Um, go have a look through Young Hands catalogue and just just be wowed by the offerings that they've got you know beautiful beautiful i mean what i like about them is um yeah they they they're using the latest solar technology um as well as um the uh, the styling from the 1970s um for the chronographs uh, their range yeah. uh, the solar range that they do I, i'm sure there's a, a piece in there that will that will suit whatever need whether it's a dress watch but it's a sporty watch. They, they've got a range that will suit everybody, and the vintage uh, young hands are very, very sought after, uh, and definitely worth looking All at. All right, so the last one, ah, oh, there they are. All right, yeah. we just found them. In case I can't get the picture up on screen, I'm going to show you the book, I, I because yeah. these were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love the design of them. Oh, and I made this comparison, again, you'll probably get a lot of hate for it. I compared it to a cleaner, better looking Skagen. All right, that's a bad comparison. Everyone will be like, "How dare you!" It, it is. Yeah, Skagen I think Max, are Danish. I and... think Max Bill would uh, would would be rolling in his grave, but yeah. uh, so hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and so the last brand we saw in this room, because obviously it was all split up into rooms, mm -hmm. was Nomos, and oh, they are beautiful. I tried on a few, and I just, yeah. the woman who we were talking to had a proper sense of humour. I was trying to explain because uh, I couldn't remember the names of the ones Andy has, and I said. The clean design one, and she went, they're all clean, and it was just really, really yeah. funny. Um, she was sound, and I tried on two blue ones, one that was a 38, it was yeah. quite small, really nice, drilled lugs, absolutely beautiful, and then I tried another one that was bigger, that had lugs that like came out like freaking saucers, they were huge, uh, and again, really, really comfortable, really nice. I think I might have to just go through the saving and get an Omos. I think that's going to have to be my next watch. I think now seeing them in the flesh, yeah. um, to actually physically hold them and to look at the dials, um, the, uh, the quality um, just shouts out. I think they're going to slowly increase in value as well. Um, it's one of them brands that I think in the future, because of their design, because of how different they are, because of how just great they are, um, I think they are going to be sought after in the future, yeah. collectible pieces. So. I'd say get a hold of Nomos if you can. I'm hoping to get one in for review some point down the line. Um, we'll, we'll see about that. But I just, I absolutely love them. Maybe, maybe it will just come down to me getting one eventually, yeah. and then that'll be that'll be when I get to review one. But I got loads of literature from them, and I got this cool little uh, television thing that says Nomos, and it's one of them peepy -pee things that you look through and press the button at the bottom. I don't know what they're called. You? Um, it was the that uh, thing yeah all right then the next gallery room we went through we literally went through uh, there was nothing that caught our eye at all uh, there was stuff like u-boat in there it seemed really dismal in there and the u-boats my opinion are horrible i do not understand them that have, have you seen the u-boats did you see yeah them? The I mean, the, it's the one with the uh the crown with the lock system uh, yeah uh, I know. the very very industrial kind of uh, design um, they're for again. a certain kind of person and that uh, that's about it you know it's just, but, uh, I can't imagine yeah, everyone wearing not, them or not, liking them not mine no not, not mine either and there was a couple of other brands in there none of them really stood out uh, there was a loom room which we completely missed I, I would have yeah I mean I, I did see the loom room and, uh, but I, I didn't actually go in because um, I was uh, busy doing other things but. yeah so by this point you, we both didn't get any sleep the night before we just no. couldn't sleep um, so we were getting really tired at this point we needed food and everything so we kind of rushed along through that room because nothing took our interest and over the next few rooms we just wanted to really get and stuff that took our interest um, so well actually no we sat down and drank water and then we felt a bit better yeah. then we went in, didn't we so <clears throat> water was two pound a freaking glass and it was tap water oh. yeah every every still water which is basically council tap water two pounds a bottle gorgeous glass. A, glass. a glass a glass bottle 
which you which you took. I took. I paid two pound for it. I'm yeah. gonna leave so, it. Yeah. So you took it. I, I have took, you used it since? Well, have you I'm peed in it. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I peed in it. Yeah. 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 Right. And the next gallery we went in had Chapard, Joao yeah. Perigo, yeah, H Rosa, and Montblanc. Yeah. Um, so and let's start did, with. Why didn't we get anything? We didn't get anything from Montblanc. And no I, I did try and talk to a couple of people from there. They didn't yeah. really seem. I'm gonna be honest. Didn't seem very interested. So instead, I just looked. Beautiful watches. I wanted to speak to them. I bought their. I bought your perfume. I have an umbrella. Give me some time. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm clearly gonna buy a watch and a yeah. pen eventually. We'll say I will. Yeah. I don't know if we will, but they're really, really nice. I like the design. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't really have much to say because we didn't get to speak didn't to anyone. Um, so the next brand we saw was Gerard Perigo. Did we get anything from yeah, there? Yeah, we got the uh, the brochure. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful book. Oh Absol wow. I mean, it, it, it's the uh, one of the nicest ones. I think it's the two hundred twenty fifth anniversary of uh, Gerard Perigo. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, Perigo. <laughs> So here we go, very nice, very nice watches now, look at this. <laughs> Got a price list as well. <laughs> oh my god. Ray. I'm leaving that in for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be famous on the internet. You're gonna be a living meme. You're gonna be a living meme along with Donald Trump and his tan. Oh for god's sake. Thanks for that. Uh, it makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. So, Gerard Perigo. Beautiful watches. Never heard of them. No, and you never. <laughs> They're beautiful watches. Unfortunately, they, they, they didn't that. have that. They didn't have this one that I really wanted to see, yeah. which is just beautiful. But yeah, the ones they had were really nice. Again, we didn't really get to speak to anyone from there. Well, got some pictures. We got, got some, some pictures, pictures, but I didn't get yeah. to speak to anyone. So. Yeah. That was a shame, so we're not going to talk too much. The, the designs are beautiful, you know. They're, they're the mainstream brands, so, um, you know, there's only so much that can be said. It, I, I was more interested in the brands that will bring something new to the table, really innovating. Um, but yeah, they're really, really nice. They're, they're bringing out a whole line of vintage, um, vintage-inspired uh, watches, so... Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, these are the, they're called vintage 1945s. There's, there's all sorts that they're bringing out. Uh, <coughs> you know, it's. I mean, their vintage watches in general have become very sought after yeah. over the past. Since since I've been collecting, I've started to see like a big increase as well. Um, I haven't owned any of them, but they're very very nice. And yeah, yeah, maybe I'll get one in for review one of the vintage ones at some point because I am very interested in them and they they make some really beautiful designs um, for the prices as well. Yeah. Really good. All right. So the next one we're going to talk about is Chapard. Now you spent, I, I, I went over there first and then you went over there after. And we, uh, I went over there and I was talking to this girl about the watches and then she got talking to me because she's only worked there for three months. So she was a sales rep and right. she was honest about that. Um, and she'd only worked there for three months and she actually knew quite a lot because she'd only been there three months. She was very nice. She, she gave me the thing to sign so I could uh, get emails from them about certain promotions that they're going to have and stuff, which was really cool. Um, and she got me talking to another woman who is like their marketing manager as well, which was really nice. And I gave her my business card and everything. So that was interesting. Um, they they had a watchmaker there, which is where you spent a lot of time, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I initially uh, spoke um, with uh, one one of the representatives. He, he was one of the senior um, guys um, uh, for uh, Gerard and basically uh, Chappard. Sorry, Chappard. <laughs> yeah, um, and um, yeah, I had a good conversation with him going through, um, you know, different pieces that he was showing me and the heritage and um, and he said that um, you know he would try and get um, the watchmaker um, that uh, was actually um, at uh, it's his fourth time he's actually been to the show, and he he was just busy with another customer, a customer who was actually buying one of the watches um that was on show which was incredible uh, so he was going through the movement with him of how to change it was a gmt how to change the gmt which was very simple which was just turning the actual bezel okay it, um, that's how the, to change the gmt which was which was great and it was on the support on the support on all of them on yeah. all gmt's yeah <laughs> um and, and on that particular one very easy and and uh, the great thing was that uh, he actually gave his seat up because uh, he was sitting where the watchmaker uh, had his desk um, and uh, he actually gave his seat up and uh, sat down on one of the other seats and um, the watchmaker then sat with me and uh, went through 
uh, various movements um, that uh, are in the range and he explained um, the whole process of uh, you know, taking apart the watches using microscopes, um, loops and uh, various other um, uh, items that uh, um, uh, was so interesting uh, and talking to him he, he uh, was so passionate about uh, about the brand um, and uh, he spent four years as an apprentice um, with them and then the rest of his life to learn about um, about watches uh, and pretty the, much the mastering movements. mastering the skills yeah. he learned within them four years and uh, yeah he was really really polite as well he was just he came across like a genuinely really nice person and, and you know <clears throat> Uh, what what was nice was he actually uh, regulated well checked the regulation of uh, your uh, yeah Morris. Morris he he checked the regulation and everything because he had that machine I just asked him I was like because he was doing it with a raw movement you know with no yeah. watch or anything I was like does it have to be like that or if I let's say gave you my Morris could you just put that on the machine and he was like yeah yeah and he just like I gave him the watch and he just t tested it and it was actually just under I wanna I wanna point this out just under Chapard's um, chronometric. Tons. Tolerance, so it actually just made their their certification. Yeah. And Oris yeah. made their certification, which I thought was really cool. And he was like, he was saying it's a good brand, that's why, and everything. Um, and he also pointed out certain thing that was on the second hand for me as well, yeah, um, which was good. By yeah, him. he so, actually showed you an example of it, yeah, uh, where we he got so the oil. I don't actually think I've ever spoke about it actually on the watch mm. channel. I just realised on my Oris, there's um on the second hand. There's like something on the second hand itself. It looks like specks of dust or something. It's like a residue. Yeah, but the watch has never been opened. Um, it's never had anything done to it. It's never been like submerged in water. There's no water damage anywhere else. There's nothing showing any damage. So it's clearly something that happened in manufacturing. And our local watchmaker even said the same, mm. didn't he? So I asked him what he thought it was. And uh, he even showed us what he thinks it is, which is yeah. the ethanol, the, the, the um, alcohol that they clean the stuff in, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, he showed me, he put a screw in it and then didn't wipe it off properly and showed what happens in the way it dries. And it literally looked exactly like the second hand did. So I think Oris just act, like haven't, they didn't clean it properly or something. They, they just didn't, didn't wipe it. When, yeah, or uh, something. Uh, you know, something you know, something yeah. that could probably happen quite easily, I assume. Yeah. Um, so once again, it's sent off for service. I'll have it sorted out. It's yeah. not causing any damage and it's not going to do anything to the watch. So. It's not a big of a deal, but it was just cool that he, he pointed that out. And, and he spent, you know, a long time, uh, you know, uh, talking us through uh, the different movements. And uh, yeah. the nice thing was that he, um, you know, uh, regarding servicing of watches, yeah. he was very honest with us. And uh, he said that, you know, obviously due to, you know, different circumstances with watches and the use of them, um, if you look after them, there are certain circumstances where a watch doesn't need servicing for up to 10 years. Because he um, even said, first off, uh, Chapard say five to six years. That's what yeah. he said. And then he said, yeah. but if you, and then he went on to his own opinion, yeah. which was really good of him. Um, you know, that he didn't just say what he's probably supposed to say. Yeah. and actually gave his, his professional opinion, yeah. which is that if the watch is running fine, leave it. It's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Don't start faffing about with it. You know, yeah. just let it be. So that was really cool. And yeah. That was one of the r most memorable experiences as well. I'd probably say that was probably your, your best It was, yeah. It? I mean, to, to actually speak to a watchmaker. Yeah. Um, you know, it was great to, to, to uh, speak to the designers. And the CEOs. Uh, and yeah. the CEOs. But to actually get somebody who's physically putting the watches together yeah. uh, is just something special. Definitely. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're the artists. They are yeah. like the, yeah. the, art, the artisans. Yeah, I mean they they they're the creators yeah. in the end. I mean, you know the, the the design is there, and then they put it all together uh, and create um, the move the, the, the moving object. So the next room we went in, we saw many different brands. So let's just go. We're gonna fly through these as quick as possible because it's getting very dark, and everyone will be complaining about the light again. So <laughs> um, Alpina, um, yeah, another some pictures. Uh, another brand of Frederick Constant. We're all together. Yeah. Um, I didn't spend much time over there at all. I, I'm going to be honest, the design, I'm not impressed with Alpina. They're just expensive homage watches, in my personal opinion. Um, and I did a video about my opinion on homages, so go check that out. And the ones they were paying homage, paying homage to um, were not unattainable watches by any means, in my opinion. So they shouldn't be homages. That's my personal opinion. What did you think yeah. of 
I mean, I, I like the designs personally, um, you know, but uh, I like the brand uh, for what it stands for, but you know, it's not to everyone's taste. So uh, check them out, look at the photos, see what you think. Um, you know, it's, it's worth a look. Yeah, and point. then Frederick Constant, just clean design. I guess if that's what you're looking for, go for yeah. something like that. Uh, again, not really much to be said on them. Um, FP Jean, I went over there and I spoke to someone who was, oh, what was he? He'd been working there not for long. Um, and he's one of the watchmakers as well. I think he was anyway. Um, and he was just talking to me about all the different watches and stuff. Beautiful, beautiful watches. Did yeah. you see the FP Jones? Yeah, I did. Oh, truly incredible. Unfortunately, I didn't get to speak to anyone like really, really well known in FP Jean, but yeah. um, it was cool nonetheless to speak to someone who very, very much, and he hadn't been there long, but very much knew the brand knew the watches and was passionate about it um and yeah i asked him how he got into it and everything he said he'd been in the jewelry industry for a while working in different watch places you know selling watches and uh through that he got opportunities to go and visit the places where they make the watches yeah. and through that he met people who then got him into that industry which was really really cool um so that was cool anything to be said on fb john no no I, I think you've said it all there cool. And then there was another thing, uh, Art of Time, that had a Langeans on, um, Jack, Jacquard Rose, I'm going to put it on screen, Jacquard Rose, uh, don't know if you saw them, I saw them, the, the ones that, they had, a, they had a lady there who was actually painting a dial um, with a screen behind her, I've got a quick video so I'll put it up as well, she was painting one of the dials that, that they do, and they, they hand paint the dials, um, the, I think the mainly women's watches, and they had some absolutely incredible, incredible designs. Mm. She was looking through a telescope, um, telescope, uh, microscope. microscope, not a te She was looking through a telescope, yeah. painting it all. That's how. That's yeah, how she was four miles away at the time. <laughs> it's a long paintbrush. Um, she was looking through a microscope. <laughs> oh, we should start doing outtakes. Uh, I think so. Yeah. <coughs> Bonus of CD. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got enough of them. I know. So she was painting the dial and it just looked absolutely yeah. beautiful. So that was really cool. Did you see them? Um, I, I did take some pictures of uh, uh, painted dials. Uh, whether they were them, it might well have been. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the Langian's on, I can't even remember what they had there. I, 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 I did take some pictures, but I didn't actually get There's nothing memorable. From no. Me. Yeah, I, I will be completely honest. They're, they're, they're very, either. very, very ornate um, uh, dials. There was a blue one. Uh, I believe with the uh, like uh, the uh, C what, from Elangians on. No, that was from yeah, there was. I'm sure it was a blue one. I must have missed it because no, the Elangians on. Very... I think are beautiful. I love them. I, I think they're yeah. one of the top brands in the world. I, I'm sure, but I'm sure I, I just can't remember anything from. I think I got a picture. Then all oh, right, we'll have a look through we'll the pictures. Um, the next room we went in um, was just a mix of everything. There was nothing really memorable in that one either. Do you remember anything really from that? Because it, so, it was yesterday when we went and yeah. all that happened at night, we forgot quite a bit, I'm not going to lie. But we're not going to bore you with us trying to remember certain things that we just can't. So Another thing is that there's so much to oh, see. Yeah. Also, you need really a couple of days to take it's it all It's a three-day event. Yeah. If you've got the money, go for the three days and spend one day on each floor. Uh, there's three floors, spend one yeah. day on each floor and limit yourself to that. Even if it means you're only there for three hours or two hours, um, just stay for them two, three hours, go get some food and then spend the rest of your day in London and then go the next day to the next floor. Otherwise you just bombard yourself with so much interesting stuff that you forget a lot of it. Yeah. And that's what we did. And I think maybe next time we'll try and actually plan the weekend if we can. If, if we can. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll try yeah. and make it work. But it was just really, really it was a great experience nonetheless. Was, I'm just saying, yeah. if you can do that, try and do that because it'll make so it more memorable. It. So <laughs> the next brand we saw was in the next room and it was the only one that we really paid any attention to it was Dewitt, Dewitt, uh, Dewitt. I can't, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, they had some very interesting designs and stuff, so we'll just put pictures up on screen. Um, we, nothing really. We didn't speak to anyone. No, unfortunately, though, I, I I can't even remember if there was anybody standing. I don't think there was anyone there. Um, oh no, there was. I remember. It was a guy and a girl who both worked there. And they were too. I re, I remember this. They were too busy taking pictures of their own watches. Do you remember? Because he was putting right. watches on her. Ah yes, that's right. They were standing the back. at the back. Yeah, that's right. Because um, there were two that were there because they had the things on, yeah. and she was like trying on loads of different watches from them, and he was taking pictures yeah. of everything. It was quite comical. Yeah. Like, we were standing there, and they they had no interest. Yeah, I remember now. So you get a bad vote from me for that. 
Um, I'm not going to lie, but your watches look cool, so yeah. just get better people to present them next time. Yeah, they basically cover the, uh, your, 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 your arm. Sort of, your arm. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was on a stand. Um, it was it was incredible. Yeah, uh, so I, and I'd love to have known more about it, but they just didn't yeah, there was come. nobody to speak to. So uh, do it next time. Send better people. And I'm sorry if I'm getting anyone in trouble here, but yeah, you're getting paid. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the last room we went in had a mix of different brands um, that we're going to go through, and a, a little interesting bit about uh, the diving watches that had some really yeah, cool that watches. was a great. Display. Now that was that's one thing we're going to definitely talk about in detail. Uh, Bell and Ross was there. I don't really understand them personally. Um, we had a look at a few of them. Some interesting stuff, but uh, nothing really stood out to me personally. No, not I, to I'm me. not. I'm not a big fan of uh, of Bell and Ross in general. I just I could understand why because their history, but from what they're producing nowadays, it's like they've gone a bit away from their history, mm. in, in my opinion. Uh, but I don't know enough about the brand yeah. to comment too much because yeah. otherwise I'll get another angry person emailing me. Yeah, <laughs> for having opinions. Yeah, stop. Um, the next one. I think we will talk about uh, which is Bremont. Now, you, if you want to give your opinion on Bremont before this, like you, you really like them, didn't you? I, I, I like the um, that it's a, a, a British uh, brand. Um, I like that um, it's got um, the, uh, the the aviation history. Um, you know, they're very much uh, geared to aviating uh, aviation watches. Um, and um, I, I personally liked the um, uh, the actual watches. That, yeah, they look uh, nice, don't they? they, they I, I like yeah. the way they look as well. I think um, they're really good looking watches. But um, um, overpriced, but, absolutely, yeah. Um, overpriced for what, for what they are, yeah. massively. Uh, but very, very nice nonetheless. There were two people standing there. Both, I feel, are very high up in Vermont. Yeah. Um, they they seem to look like that and mm. act like that with the, the when they were talking to each other and stuff. Um, they didn't even look at us. They didn't even look no. in our direction. We were going behind. We were like yeah. behind them, in front of them. We I were mean, everywhere. I mean, I've got probably about ten photos of different yeah. different uh, watches that I was walking mm. around and uh, sh you know showing so much interest in in the brand, and, and yet I was I was invisible to them, which was yeah. a real shame. And this is where people will say, well, why didn't you just ask them? The point is that if you're showing that much interest, they as People who representing the brand are supposed to come over to you. Not only that, they were talking to each other. It's rude just to interrupt them, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. You know, if I'm talking with a colleague about something important at work and someone interrupts me, of course I'm not bothered, but the point is it's rude because you don't know what they're talking about. Uh, you know, it could be something very, very serious. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're supposed to put that on hold when there's a customer or someone who's taking interest. Even more so in an event like this, where it's based on these are your next buyers, you know. Yeah, that's that's the way I see it. Yeah. These are people who are yeah. genuine interested in watches, and so should you. That's why you're there. I mean, um, we, we were doing nothing uh, that we hadn't done in on other um, yeah. uh, displays, and people approached us. We had, um, and back to the one of the prototype one, which hasn't been even made yet. Yeah, the one who showed us videos. He right. came from like the other end of the room to us. Yeah, and brought us over to him. Yeah, you know he, he, he says come and really yeah. keen to, So to, and he was the CEO guy. So, so that's how yeah. you do it. And I think they yeah. need to take some tips from him. He knows yeah. exactly how to, how to engage you in yeah. and uh, make yeah. you feel welcome. So that yeah. that's the perfect example to compare. Yeah. Um, so it's a real shame because I would have loved to have seen some of their yeah, watches. The, the brand is you know well the watches are beautiful. It, yeah, yeah. You know we've got. You're so little in as as British watchmakers, so yeah, yeah. And you'd think being at a British yeah. and it was um, a shame we didn't see Robert, Robert Smith either. Yeah, exactly. True, yeah. true. Um, but the yeah, that was a real shame of Brimon. That really, really bummed me out. To yeah, be honest. I was did, like, yeah. I was like, that's ridiculous, you know. And the whole time they were talking, they they weren't like pausing to look around. So it was constant flow of conversation that you can't interrupt, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, although you could, at the end of the day, we're not buying anything, so it, it kind of puts that pressure on you as a mm. as a person standing there. Like, do I have the yeah? Do I have the the authority to like you know mm. say can I see this sort of stuff? Because yeah. it makes you question it. Yeah. Um, so. I, and I feel it was people high up, so game on you. <laughs> um, next one, Porsche Design, which are made by Turner. Um, looked cool. We didn't really see much from them. I think they were dealing with a customer. Um, yeah, we didn't actually get to talk to them. We only saw the watches in the cabinet. So the lighting isn't brilliant in these cabinets. The, the lighting is designed to obviously show, show the off watches, the watch, yeah. but for because you're limited to um, the way that you can take pictures, which is mainly with your mobile, 
obviously overexpose you on the uh, on the watch faces was happening all the time. We were having to physically zoom into the watch to get rid of the overexposure. Uh, so what I'll do, a real shame. Um, I'll show you as many of ours as we can, yeah. but I'll probably just get pictures off Google. So yeah, you probably better don't better sue me too. for using Google pictures. Yeah. Um, yeah, they they look nice, and I think for the price point, you're getting quite a lot of watch. Um, and Tim from What You Want or, has spoke about them a few times, and he says if you want a really good watch that's made by a really good watch company, and you don't want to pay the expensive prices, Porsche Design's a great way to go. But if you're not someone who has any interest in cars and doesn't want, and doesn't own a Porsche, it might be a bit of a tacky thing to have on your wrist. And I thought that was a really good way to put it because at the end of the day, it is a Porsche watch. Um, it's like them Ferrari watches by oh, yeah. Hublot. You know, yeah. it's. it's it's a niche. It's made yeah. for people who either have or want the car, um, or it's just a bit of a weird thing to own. You know, having Porsche on your wrist. Do you own a Porsche? No. You, do you like Porsches? No. You know, it's just it's it's, it's a bit like having a Porsche key ring yeah. without the car. <laughs> it's a bit a bit tacky, yeah. um, but really nice watches nonetheless. And then the next, the last thing we saw was the uh, it was called Deep Time, and it's where they had a display of um, diving watches across like the span of eras. They had. Um, Panerais, they had quite a few Panerais. Yeah, they had the very first uh, Panerais, so it was... The that, real diving watches. Yeah, they yeah. had like a, a, a huge dome. Um, that would fill of some sort of liquid, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, it, um, it, it was very much um, like a diving bell um, <laughs> that was on your wrist. and uh, I can't even very begin unusual. to imagine the weight of that. Uh, I didn't expect Panerai to uh, be producing that kind of... I, I must admit, I hadn't gone back that far in Panerai's history to know that they did those particular dive watches. I didn't know they did that, but I know that their their history lays in diving massively. Like that's what Panerai are, yeah. are for, known for and respected for in the community, which is being true dive watches. Um, so it was cool to see them, although I'm not the biggest Panerai fan um, in general, but it was really cool to see them. The next ones we saw were after that, um, there was all kinds of stuff. There was Seiko. Let's just go through the Seikos we saw on the end. Um, they had some Marine Masters. They had the Paddy, um, yeah. which I love. I love the Paddy. I think it looks great. They had the other Paddy, the Quartz version. Um, again, looked really, really cool, didn't they? Yeah. Um, I prefer the hands on the uh, automatic uh, Paddy than the uh, the Quartz version. Um, but... I think they're two completely different models. Yeah. Out, I don't think it yeah. is an automatic and a quartz version. Yeah. I just don't know. I'm just referring yeah. to them as the automatic one and the quartz yeah. one. Um, uh, but it was nice, nice to see them uh, on display uh, with the likes of um, the uh, was it the Comex uh, Comex Tudor? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they had the Comex Tudor there. They had uh, uh, Eternas uh, Comex Rolex. Sorry, Comex yeah. Rolex. They had Tudors there as well, um, the Black Bays, the Pelagos, the Snowflake, I think. I think it was a Snowflake. They, Auris. they had vintage, yeah, they had Auris, the selection of the modern and the original. The, the original 65, 65 yeah. The uh, Turners, I think yeah, you were just saying about. Yeah, they had vintage Turners, um, they were there. Um, so it was a whole wide, wide and spread. Ward. Um, and and um, yeah, uh, I, I believe there was even a Seamaster in there, I believe. Yeah, there were some Omegas as well. That's, yeah. that's true. There were some yeah. Omegas. Very, very nice. Yeah. Um, that was one of the, another one of the really cool things yeah, to see. It was. We didn't spend long there, surprisingly, but it was really enjoyable nonetheless to see them. Them things. I didn't read too much. I think they had um, the the Oris um, Carl Brasher as well with the the brass. Uh, not, I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying yeah, brass now. Yeah. It's, it's uh, bronze. That's what yeah. it is. Bronze, uh, which was really cool to see as well. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there was no one around there to like let us look at the watches they had but i'm assuming that's because some of them were so old you probably can't yeah. um but it was cool to see them nonetheless i really enjoyed my time there my favorite was definitely the experience with the two rolexes the paul newman the explorer 2 and just really experiencing them watches two two watches of one one brand you know the paul newman that i just thought i'd never ever experience and most people never will and i got to experience two at the same time i just thought that was amazing um, that was my favourite experience. My worst one, I'd have to say, was Bremont and uh, just the way they they really didn't care and it really just made my opinion on the brand because that's what they're doing. They're representing the brand. So if they're not representing it properly, the brand kind of takes a flack in my opinion. Um, so it, it's put me off the brand a bit knowing that then people will like that. But I still like the way they look. But yeah, that's my personal opinion. What was your best and worst? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, the best experience was the uh, Chopard um, watchmaker, I mean, the conversation with him, um, and uh, also with the uh, uh, the N N4 um, uh, creator. Yeah, uh, and Die Rich as well, that was yeah, one of my favourites as well. Um, and um, yeah, I, they, they were my favourite moments um, uh, of, of the show. And then the worst one, really, uh, again, I have to agree, is the bro one. Was it yours as well? Yeah, it, uh, it, it's, it sort of uh, spoiled what could have been, you know, a, a very nice experience with them. Because I'm sure that they're very, you know, passionate about their of course, brand. you know, and uh, they clearly and were shame. high up people, so they must have been, because they're the people yeah. who created them. Um, yeah. But it was just, like I said, a real, real shame. And I'd love to know who it was, um, just so I, I know the people... That it was, you know, just and, yeah, and that way. I mean, I can, anyone, that, yeah. that way, they can be like, it wasn't the people high up. Stop saying that. It was actually yeah. just two sales reps, and then I'd, then I'd be like, okay, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I just fear it is. It was two people very high up. Uh, and um, also, when we when we walked in for the first time, we actually saw the Bentley uh, luggage. Um, oh yeah. Uh, with the area uh, aviation. Um, uh, what was it a aviation? Um, yeah, the Rolex GMT. There, I remember that. Um, that they. Do bespoke um, luggage and I've cases. got a picture of you and, holding it actually. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah that was incredible. Uh, the quality of it, um, so unusual uh, for a briefcase. Yeah, I, really, uh, really cool. And, and there was a, an actual um, ejector seat from a jet. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. which was brilliant. Um, so, yeah, that was great. <coughs> Cool. So I would say if you're going to go to Salon QP, definitely do it. We're going to be going again next year without a doubt, yeah. whether it be one day or the whole weekend. But like we said, if you are going, if you can do it financially, go for the three days and split each day to a room, um, not to a room, sorry, to a floor and just fully take in everything that they've got to offer rather than go around within a certain amount of time. It just, it's too much to take in. You will get a lot of things and you won't appreciate certain things that you could have. Um, and make sure you take uh, a, a big uh, hold all or uh, rucksack. If you like us and you want to yeah, sort of experience if you want, everything, if, if you take want, everything. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to collect the books. Yeah, take something that can hold, hold it because it's freaking heavy. <laughs> Jesus. Um, when it comes to food and drink and stuff, it's extremely expensive. Yeah. But there's a McDonald's down the road that we yeah. went to. And we saw a couple of other people who did as well, yeah. didn't we? Uh, two ladies who also went there. They were in McDonald's. Sat next to us and everything. I'll... I'll like, what was the chances, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they'd, they'd uh, been to a Rolex uh, conference um, <laughs> that uh, had been held there, and um, yeah, uh, they had it. It was the first time they'd experienced uh, Salon QP, so it was interesting speaking to Exactly, them. exactly. So, people there were great. I met a couple. I forgot to get a phone number. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. <laughs> um, so there was there was quite a few awesome people there. I gave out a few of my business cards to businesses. And also I gave it to one guy who was just looking around. He said he watches TGV's videos. So TGV, you've got a fan who went, uh, which was pretty cool. So I, I'm trying to make him one of my fans as well now. I hope you don't mind. Um, but it was great just seeing everyone there. And I'd say definitely go if you get the opportunity. But that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much for joining me with this adventure. And then this... Freaking dialogue of a video that lasted almost an entire film length. Awesome. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you in the next one, guys.